Good evening and welcome back to Defining Virtuosity. I'm Odin Rathman, Professor of Violin at Cleveland State University. We're going to c continue our foray into Book 1 of Wolfhard Studies, now with Number 2. Um, the second etude and um, the first etude can share many of the same variations, so I'm not going to demonstrate too many of those. Um, Instead, I, I want to bring back the notion of left-hand articulation and suggest that for those that can, that this be done in four and eight note slurs, um, trying to make extremely clear left-hand articulations without creating any lurches or um, tension in other places um, in, the, in the, the left arm, from the, from the neck down to the shoulder and out to the hand. Um, that all of the vertical actions are pr very precise rhythmically in terms of um, how we lift and drop. And in the bow, that we're, whether doing four notes to a bow or, to the, or eight, that the bow speed remains the same and that the tone is even from the frog. Crossings. In string crossings, we want to follow the roundness of the bridge and anticipate. Go from the G string to the D string side of the G string to the D string on its G string side to the center of the D to the A string side of the D to the D string side of the A to the center of the A to the E string side of the A to the A string side of the E to really follow it in a rounded way this way. Um, so that our string crossings are as even as possible. Um, again, the setup for the for the left hand um, for Alicia Faith would be the same. We have the same half steps on the A and E string between the first and second finger, between the first and between the third and second on the on the G string, and then we have all whole steps on the E string because we're still in the key of, of C major. And it's, it's good that um, Wolfhard has kept us here because that gives the student a few shots at getting comfortable with that particular set of frames of possible tetrachords that can be placed. Um, so I, I would just suggest trying to go through it, four notes to a bow, not too fast. Uh, make, make sure that your fiddle is, is in, a, in a good position with the strings relatively flat over the floor, the scroll slightly higher than the than the, the chin rest, and your arm free, your fingertip pressures light. Right, so relatively relaxed, yeah? And <laughs> practice it eight notes to a bow. I won't play the whole etude, but the idea remains the same. Uh <laughs>
and this will really help to improve the clarity of the left hand articulations because of course the bow is not articulating at all um, and you can also think about the the flexibility uh, of the fingers when they strike that they never strike locked in the square position with um, more pressure and then releasing back I don't believe in that I believe even on the impact the 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 center of gravity should be just behind the first knuckles of the fingers. And again, I would refer you back to the slow motion footage of Yasha Heifetz playing Scherzo Tarantel, and you can see that that's clearly what's happening even at lightning fast speeds. Um, because if, if, if there aren't shock absorbers in both hands, the springs of the bow and the springs of the left hand, we're going to injure ourselves. We have to, and also it, it becomes dead. The sound becomes locked. In the moment that there's any freedom in the finger, it's a totally different world than, than that. Um, so even if you're practicing non-vibrato, make sure that you're practicing with conditions for vibrato in your hand, in your arm, all the way. Um, so that's, that's a, a, a little tutorial on number two. You could, of course, for more advanced students, add more advanced um, bowings to it. Uh, the septic bowings still apply, the variations. I mean, if you're if somebody is is reviewing Sibelius last movement, you can plug in the Sibelius bow, uh, bowing, it works fine. Um, it's all a, a question of what you want to get out of it. You can do ricochets, um, two plus one. <laughs> Mr. Gingold telling me once years ago that he took some simple etudes and brought them over to the snare drum player at the Cleveland Orchestra and asked the Cleveland the, uh, Orchestra snare drum player to show him some of his exercises. And then Mr. Gingold started doing some like, uh, So the, the possibilities are really infinite with this. You, you can do... Uh, want to do. You can do any combination of rhythms in either direction and have fun with it. Um, so that's why I don't get bored with these even as a 54 year old man. Um, have fun with this, you know, uh, practice it collet as well. Review always the fundamentals. on the long slurs that you have more left for the end than at the beginning. You're not the one running out of bow. Um, so th these are just some thoughts on how this can be practiced and you can of course combine rhythms as well. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to post shortly um, a tutorial on number three. Thank you for watching and uh, remember uh, if you enjoy this or if you have questions please feel free to comment. Um, like, share, and subscribe to my page. Thanks a lot.